Hello and welcome to another educational video from EGIS Associates. In this video we're going to take a look at ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap and kind of give you an idea of the differences between these two applications from uh, Esri. Right now is a very confusing time for many uh, new GIS users and even many existing ArcGIS users because we're in the middle of a transition. Uh, Esri is moving from the old tried and true ArcMap uh, platform over to the new ArcGIS Pro application. And this is causing a lot of confusion and trying to figure out, well, when should I migrate if I'm an existing user? When do I need to go from ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro? Or if I'm a brand new user, which one should I learn? Should I learn ArcMap or should I learn ArcGIS Pro? So this is just really kind of causing a lot of confusion within the industry at this point. And I, I'm hoping through this video to really help you answer some of those questions, at least for yourself. And keep in mind that the, the answer to, to some of this is going to be different for each individual depending on your circumstances. So we're going to start first with a little history. We're going to look at um, where these things came from, right? So ArcMap, our tried and true uh, application, we've been using it for a long time. Uh, it, it was first released in 1999. It's very, very hard to believe that that application is almost 20 years old. It's part of a, a larger package called ArcGIS Desktop, which includes ArcMap and Arc Catalog. Being created back in the, the late 90s, it was built on a COM architecture, which means it's limited to 32 bits. What that means for non-IT type folks is that the application itself is limited on the amount of hardware it can use. Uh, the file sizes it can work with um, and the ability to really leverage all the power we have in modern uh, computers. But it was still, it still is a very powerful application. Uh, having been around for almost 20 years, it's, it's fairly stable. Um, it does have its moments, as any longtime user will tell you. But it certainly has grown to the point that it, it is much better than the applications it replaced in those late 90s, early 2000s time frame. And that was the ArcView GIS and ArcInfo workstation. Now, the initial version for ArcMap was 8.0. And, and that may seem a little weird. Uh, why start at 8.0 and not 1.0? Uh, well, that's because it was an outgrowth of the old ArcInfo workstation, which was at 7.2, uh, if I remember correctly, when ArcMap rolled out to begin replacing it. And thus it was uh, tagged with the next version number with, of 8.0. We're currently at 10.6.1 in ArcMap. And you're not going to see a lot of ongoing development for ArcMap, if, if any. Uh, from what Esri's putting out there, all they're going to be doing uh, really is bug fixes and, and some patches to keep it running on the latest version of Windows. So don't expect a lot of new functionality to be added into ArcMap. Pretty much what you see now is what you'll get until Esri decides to completely retire uh, the ArcMap application. So Arc Pro is Esri's newest desktop application. It was released in uh, 2015 and it is a completely new product. This is not just an update to the older ArcMap and Arc Catalog products uh, that we've been using up to this, this point. It's built on a .NET architecture and it's fully 64-bit enabled. And what that means is it can indeed leverage all of the power that a modern computer has. It doesn't have the limitations that we'll talk about in, in a moment uh, that ArcMap has. So it really can take as much hardware as you can throw at it and, and use it all, which does mean it's typically faster than ArcMap for most uh, everything that it does uh, and will have added capabilities in it because of its ability to leverage uh, greater hardware capability within it. It is going to be replacing ArcGIS Desktop. And so that means that at some point, existing ArcMap users, Arc Catalog users, ArcScene, ArcGlobe are going to have to migrate over to ArcPro. Exactly when that's going to happen, um, 
Esri has not given me a, a clear answer when I ask uh, folks from Esri at conferences and in various other places. I get differing answers. The best guess is somewhere probably around three to five years is when they'll finally pull the the plug on ArcMap, uh, Arc Catalog, and Arc seeing Arc Globe completely. So you have a little bit of time if you're thinking about the, when to migrate, uh, especially if you have a lot of customizations that are built on top on top of ArcMap or Arc Catalog. You will more than likely have to rewrite any scripts or add-ins that you've created, uh, or if you or have purchased uh, third-party extensions or apps, uh, you have to wait to, to they get those new versions written for Arc Pro. Uh, and it's, it's going to take a rewrite because of that whole different uh, engine, the .NET versus the, the COM architecture there, as well as differing versions of Python and, and things of that nature. So uh, if you are an existing user looking to migrate to, to Pro, you know, you need to check those things um, out. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that Arc Pro being 64-bit, if you are connecting to other relational databases from SQL Server or Oracle, uh, you will need the 64-bit client for those databases, which may cause some issues if uh, you have been using ArcMap, because that uses a 32-bit client, uh, or any other applications. If you have some sort of permitting system or inspection system, or tax system or, or so on that, that leverages one of those uh, big databases. If it's also built on a 32-bit architecture, you need to be aware of uh, the fact that Arc Pro requires the 64-bit client, so that can be a little bit problematic. Uh, Arc Pro is uh, up to version 2.2.1. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work with it since before it came out as version 1. Uh, back when it was still in beta, and Esri is really putting all of their development power from the desktop perspective into Arc Pro. And each new release that comes out has an increasing level of functionality and capability. Uh, is it still 100% with ArcMap and uh, Arc Catalog? Not yet. It's probably 98% of the way there, uh, but it should be coming very soon uh, to hit that 100% mark. Uh, with the amount of resources Esri's putting uh, behind it. Like I said, it's it's very, very close. And I'd actually say if you're an average uh, ArcGIS user, then you could probably shift to Pro now uh, and, and have all the functionality you need. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit later about some things that Arc Pro doesn't do yet, uh, so you can get a better idea of, uh, is it time to switch or beginning to, to plan that migration over so what are some, some comparisons between the two applications? Or what are the, the differences uh, outside of some of the history we've talked about? Well, I mentioned the limitations of ArcMap because of that COM architecture and that 32-bit setup. One of those is the amount of RAM it can use. ArcMap can only use up to 4 gigabytes of RAM, so that if you have more than that, uh, ArcMap really won't benefit directly from, from having that increased amount of RAM. Whereas Arc Pro being 64-bit .NET, there is really no limit on the amount of RAM you can use. So if you've got 8 gig, 12, 16, 32, Arc Pro can make uh, use of that. Also, most modern computers have multiple cores, meaning multi-mini processors on the main processor. So you'll see, I think most average computers are at least dual core now. But you'll also have quad core, some have six, eight core, or more uh, going in there. ArcMap is not really designed to make use of multiple processors or multiple cores. You know, being built in 1999, uh, originally that wasn't prevalent at most users' workstations. You found that the server arena quite frequently, but not at the workstation level. So it doesn't really make use of that. However, there is a 64-bit geoprocessing patch that you can add that will take some of your 
geoprocessing tools and make them run in a 64-bit environment, at which point they can make use of multiple cores, but you have to install the patch and it's not for the whole app. It's only for certain GeoPress. So it still won't impact your abilities or, or panning, zooming, or anything of that, that nature there. Uh, whereas Arc Pro is designed out of the box to use multiple cores so that it can what we call hyper thread, meaning it can divvy up the workload between the multiple cores on the processor, which then means it runs faster because it's, you know, you've got four, two to four or more uh, cores running all those processes. So uh, much more efficient and effective that way than you have with ArcMap. The other thing that Arc Pro does that ArcMap does not do is work with a graphics processing uh, unit. ArcMap uh, is not designed to take use of a or make full use of a dedicated video card that will have its own dedicated graphics processor as well as RAM on board. Arc Pro is. Matter of fact, it's actually recommended that you run a dedicated graphics card with a GPU and RAM on it for the uh, display because Arc Pro is extremely graphics intensive. So strongly encouraged to, to have that uh, dedicated graphics card as opposed to integrated graphics. Uh, with ArcMap, it doesn't make that big a difference. Uh, the interface, the user interface, the GUI that you have with ArcMap is toolbar driven. It is very 1990s. Uh, with multiple, multiple toolbars, very easy to get lost in there. So it's not very intuitive for new users. Whereas Arc Pro makes use of a modern ribbon like you see in Word and Excel and even AutoCAD that is, is more intuitive. Uh, tools are presented as you need them instead of you having to hunt through the toolbar. More user-friendly interface with Arc Pro. Uh, especially for new users. Uh, of course, those that have been using ArcMap and are used to the toolbars, going to the ribbon can be a little bit difficult because you're not used to that kind of interface. So do keep that in mind. ArcMap does not allow you to visualize in 3D, whereas Arc Pro does. Right out of the box, you can create 3D scenes in Arc Pro without any uh, extensions. To do that with ArcMap, uh, well, you, you can't visualize in 3D. You have to have the 3D Analyst extension and then go into Arc Scene or Arc Globe to other applications which are part of that extension. Said Arc Pro allows you to do that out of the box, which is part of the reason it's that much more graphic intensive and why it really is recommended that you have that dedicated graphics card. Uh, both of them still have extensions, so your 3D analyst, geostatistical analyst, spatial analyst, network analyst, uh, and so on. Uh, are all there for both applications and they basically do the, the same thing there. So uh, if you are currently using one of the extensions for ArcMap, Arc Pro has the equivalent that, that does basically the same thing. It's just wrapped in a different interface uh, there. As far as scripting languages, if you've written any Python scripts to help automate processes within uh, the products, uh, ArcMap uses an older version of Python. It's the 32-bit. Uh, it's version 1.9.3. Uh, that's the, what the current version of ArcMap runs there, so the, the 10.6. Whereas Arc Pro uses the 64-bit version of Python and it's 3.6.5. So if you do have scripts that you've already written in for ArcMap, uh, you may have to do some adjustments to those to get them to run in Arc Pro because of the different Python versions and some of the different commands that get called from ArcPy in Arc Pro. So do keep that in mind as you're, you're looking to, to migrate. So that is a kind of a quick down and dirty list of some of the differences. What I want to do now is jump in and actually take a look at these side by side so you can see some of what I've talked about as well as examine some of the other differences. So let's go jump in and take a, a look at these now. Okay, so now you can see uh, ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro side by side. I've got ArcMap over here on the left hand side and ArcGIS Pro over here on the right hand side. So immediately you can see the differences in the user interface, right? So you can see all the various toolbars in here in ArcMap. Uh, and these are just a few of the toolbars that ArcMap includes. If you right click up here, you can see all the different toolbars that are included in ArcMap, along with those associated with the various extensions. So a huge number of toolbars to, to keep track of. 
uh, in there. Whereas ArcGIS Pro uses this ribbon interface it's, that's very clean. I can go through the various tabs and look at the tools that are available in there, depending on what I'm trying to, to do. All right, so they're all there. The other thing that's um, nice with this, if I select something, like in a map here, I go down and select a layer, notice new tabs appear directly in the ribbon that deal with that object I selected, in this case, the, the layer. So you can see I've got the Appearance tab now, so I can control the symbology for that layer. I can control the zoom scale and so on. I can also go over and work with labeling for that layer. And if I go back up and I say select the, the map that I'm working with, then those other tabs disappear. So it's very intuitive for the user, right? It presents the tools that I need at the time I, I need them, instead of having to work through all of these various uh, toolbars that we have in ArcMap. So from that perspective, Arc Pro is very nice. Uh, again, more intuitive for that, that new user. Uh, a couple of other differences we're going to look at. So uh, in ArcMap, right, I work with these map document files, these MXD files. So you can see the one I have open here is the edit demo.mxd. See that up here in the upper left-hand corner of the interface for ArcMap. And in a single map document, I only have two views. So I can have the data view and I have the layout view. So in a single MXD, I have a singular layout. So this is the printed page, the map I'm trying to, to create. I'd have that one single layout within ArcMap. However, if I go to ArcGIS Pro, instead of working with just a single MXD file, I'm working with a, a project. In this case, the project is called ArcGIS Pro Demo. And within a single project, I can have multiple maps. So there's a, the map I have open is this one down here. Uh, but you can see I have a number of maps in here, right? 2D demo, 3D demo. I have a base map that, uh, created. Um, and you can tell by the icons uh, that some of these are, are 3D, some of these are 2D. So I, there's no limit on the number of maps I can have in a, a single project. Also, within a single project, I have multiple layouts, right? So I'm not limited to a single layout like I am with the MXD files for ArcMap. I can have multiple layouts. They can be varying sizes. They can reference various maps that are in here, both 2D and 3D, right? So you can go here and I'll open this one layout. Okay, so now you, hear, you see here a uh, layout. In ArcGIS Pro, I've got a 3D map up here in the, the top. I've got a 2D map over here in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, and you see I have multiple layouts within this single project over here. Uh, I've got five current layouts. And you there is no limit to the number of layouts you can have in a single project. What this means is that in ArcMap, I would have to have multiple MXDs for each layout I wanted. So if I had maps, I want, if I had a map I wanted to print at 8.5 by 11 and 11 by 17 and 24 by 36, I would need three separate MXD files to accomplish that. Whereas in ArcGIS Pro, I could do that with one single project and just have multiple layouts in the one project, which then means I have less files I have to manage, which is always much easier to, to deal with. So that is one of the big advantages that Arc Pro brings uh, with its projects is the ability to have multiple layouts. If anybody has, remembers back as far as the ArcView uh, GIS days where we had those APR project files, uh, this is kind of that same concept with the multiple layouts in there. It just means less files, easier to manage our, our maps and our, our files uh, going forward because we have less of them. Uh, a couple other uh, differences uh, in here. Uh, first is uh, editing. So in ArcMap, if I wanted to edit data, I'd have to go over here and click Start Editing. That would open the edit session. If I had data in my map that came from multiple sources, so I had layers that referenced to GeoDatabase, I had other layers that referenced shapefiles, I would get a warning that says, you have data in different workspaces, which one do you want to edit? So I couldn't edit data that came from shapefiles, and from geodatabases at the same time. I would have to stop editing and restart editing and pick a different workspace. In ArcGIS Pro, editing is always enabled. 
There is no need to start and stop editing. Uh, really all I have to do is go click on the edit tab over here and then I can start getting into my edit tools where I can modify the features that I want. I can create new features with the feature templates. Uh, select the features for editing. There is no starting and stopping uh, editing, right? And it's not limited to one workspace. If this map happened to reference data from multiple sources, right? So you can see I have, go to the source tab here. Most of this data is coming from the Tripville GIS geodatabase. But if I were to add in, let's minimize some of this, go down to a folder connection and to here into this folder and bring in a shape file such as this shape file right here and bring that into my project and see it's coming from a different database but this is if I go to my list by editing right all of these are editable including that now I've got a little warning hit here that says they're in different projections or coordinates that's being projected on the fly, but nothing stops me from editing those. Even though this one references a shape file and all these others reference back to a geodatabase feature class. Okay. So it opens up editing to be much simpler for me. You still have a separate save edit. So just like in ArcMap where you click and you save edits here, you also have a save edits here on the editor. Um, tab inside of ArcGIS Pro. Another big difference with Arc Pro is that Arc Pro does have an autosave. So if I go under options down to editing, I can come down here and enable an autosave. So this will automatically save edits based on whatever interval or number of operations I've set it to. ArcMap doesn't have an autosave. You've got to remember in ArcMap to always go over here and save your edits. If you don't save your edits and it crashes or something happens, then you lose everything you've done up to the last time you did save edits. So Arc Pro does allow you to have that auto save so that you reduce the chance of losing edits uh, if you if you want to. Uh, both uh, Arc Map and, and Arc Catalog, I'm sorry, ArcGIS Pro have the catalog functionality built into it. In ArcMap, this is called the Catalog Window. In ArcGIS Pro, this is called the Catalog Pane. They serve the same function. It's where you go to manage uh, your data in other parts uh, of your GIS. So in ArcMap, right, I can set up connections to folders. I can set up database server connections, GIS server connections, and so on. Uh, and the same is true over here in ArcPro. You can see there's my folder connections just like you have over here. Uh, the big difference in Arc Pro with folder connections is you cannot connect to the root of a drive. So you'll see here in ArcMap where I have a connection to my C drive and my E drive over here. In Arc Pro, I cannot connect just to the C drive or the E drive. I have to connect to a folder on one of those drives, right? So you'll see that if I go here to E, GIS in final project data. So you can see that I'm going to expand this a little bit for a second, just so you can see that in there. That's the same as this final project data connection here in ArcGIS Pro. And you can see the, the matching. There's the import log, import log, index, index, KML, KML, and so on. Right. So same, same function here. If I want to create you know, a new uh, geodatabase in this folder in our map. I'd right click, go new, choose the geodatabase. Same true over here in uh, Arc Pro. Again, I'd right click, new, and choose uh, what I'm trying to create. So uh, again, a lot of similarities uh, from from that point. Uh, the one of the other big differences between Arc Pro and Arc Map is the integration with ArcGIS Online, which is Esri's cloud uh, solution, and Portal, which is basically the same thing as ArcGIS Online, but instead of being in the cloud, you install it locally on your own servers. So with uh, Arc. 
Pro, you've got this portal connection here in the catalog pane that allows you to access the information through your portal very quickly and easily. Uh, you also have access to analysis tools like these ready to use tools to create profiles, watershed boundaries, uh, do routes and and so on. These are all tools coming from ArcGIS Online. So they're directly embedded here for uh, easy access, which is both good and bad. Uh, the good is their easy access. The bad is all of these will use ArcGIS Online credits. So you need to be careful of, of that. With ArcMap, the ArcGIS Online, because it came out much later than ArcMap, is here, but it's not as seamlessly integrated. Uh, you have to make sure you're connected by going up here to File and to Sign In. Sign into your account, and from there, then you'd come down here to these ready to use tools and hosted services to access the same content you do over here in the catalog pane with portal and these ready to use tools directly embedded in the tab um, in Arc Pro, right? So again, hopefully now you're beginning to see some of the, the differences. There are obviously, like I said, similarities as we've seen with the catalog window versus catalog pane. There's also a table of contents window here in ArcMap, which is mimicked by the contents pane over here in Arc Pro. Uh, but again, they've increased functionality where you have four buttons here. You now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons here in Arc Pro. So the interfaces aren't completely different. There is some similarities between the two. Uh, and there and, and there's a whole lot more to compare, but this gives you a rough idea of the differences between the, the two applications and how they work. So now let's get back and, and let's talk about some of the capabilities that Arc Pro doesn't have yet. So some things that Arc Pro does not do, but ArcMap does. And, and keep in mind, you know, ArcMap has been in development since 1999, whereas Arc Pro has only been around since 2015. So yeah, they, they've had a lot of time to, to flesh out ArcMap, uh, certainly compared to the time they've had with Arc Pro. And, and Esri is really working at getting Arc Pro to 100% match with ArcMap as far as functionality. So currently it does not do the parcel fabric. So if you're maintaining parcel data using Esri's parcel fabric uh, data model, it's not supported in Arc Pro. You can still view the data that's in a parcel fabric, but you can't maintain that information or use any of those parcel fabric maintenance tools there. But that is coming very soon. They are working on that. I would expect that sometime by the end of this year, maybe first of 2019, that that would be uh, available. Uh, if you work in utilities and make use of the geometric network uh, capability, that's not supported in ArcGIS Pro just yet. It is, well, I say just yet, it's not going to be, is really what I should say. It's being replaced by the new utility network model that Esri released earlier this year and has it out in kind of a beta form right now, but uh, that will ultimately be replacing the geometric networks. Again, ArcGIS Pro can view all the data that's in a geometric network, but it doesn't allow you to do any of the network tracing capability or data maintenance uh, of a geometric network. You still must use ArcMap for that. But again, at some point, uh, you're going to want to look at migrating to the utility network when it's ready. And it's, it, like I said, it's more beta now. I would say give it at least another year before it's ready for full implementation and, and maybe even longer. It does not support map annotation or graphics. So if you're accustomed to going into a map in ArcMap and dropping a box uh, in there or some sort of descriptive text as just kind of free floating um, information, you can't do that in Arc Pro. You can through the layout, but not directly in the, the map. And Esri has been very reluctant to the idea of allowing that capability in Arc Pro because Arc Pro is really geared with that integration with 
portal and ArcGIS Online in mind and the fact that you're going to be publishing things to the web and those types of graphics and annotation don't work well in the web environment. So they're not really inclined at this point to add that functionality to ArcGIS Pro. There are some of us pushing for that. And if you go to ideas.arcgis.com, you can find where we've put that up there. And if that is something important to you, you know, make sure to locate that idea and give it a vote up. Uh, if you have specific reasons why you need that functionality, make sure to add a comment describing those. And the more people that push for that, hopefully the, the bigger chance we'll get it. Publishing directly to ArcGIS server is not supported. You have to publish through Portal if you're using ArcGIS Pro. So uh, if you don't have Portal installed, you're going to have to if you're running ArcGIS server. Now, it's not a big deal in that if you're keeping up with your maintenance, uh, it's now part of ArcGIS Enterprise, which is includes ArcGIS server, uh, Portal for ArcGIS, and the, the former SDE uh, or data stores, I think is what they're calling them now in there, but you're going to have to, to need that. I don't think that Esri will include a direct publish capability to server uh, because they're trying to keep publishing consistent, right? Whether you publish to ArcGIS Online or out to the new ArcGIS Enterprise, the process would be the same. So I don't expect that would be added. Uh, cartographic representations, if anybody knows what that is, that's rules-based symbology that's set up in the geodatabase. That's currently not supported in Arc Pro. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not sure if it will be. They've got a new thing out called Arcade, which is a expression language, which can be used to control symbology and can be very powerful. Uh, so that may take the place of cartographic representations. Now, Arc Pro will display data that is already ha already has a cartographic representation assigned to it, but you can't create change uh, or, or manage representations from ArcGIS Pro. Uh, and coverages and personal geodatabases are not supported in ArcGIS Pro and probably never will be. Uh, coverages go all the way back to ArcInfo Workstation back, so back to the, the 90s and earlier. Uh, I don't know that too many people are using those anymore, but you may find legacy data. Personal geo databases are, are gone with Arc Pro. So if you're using those old Microsoft Access geo databases, those MDB files, you need to port those over to a file geo database. And you'll get better performance if you do. Uh, it doesn't have all the size limitations that those old personal databases had. They're, the file geo database is much faster, can store a lot more data. So Really, uh, you ought to look at doing that anyway, even if you're not migrating to, to Pro just yet. So, so there you, you have it. Those are, are just some of the, the major differences between the, the two products. Um, like I said, Arc Pro uh, will be replacing Arc Map uh, in the not too distant future. So if you haven't begun thinking about migrating, I encourage you to do so. It is a very different product for existing users, so it will require some education on getting proficient at it, just like for those that went from ArcView and ArcInfo over to ArcGIS had to go through. The same is true here going from ArcMap to, to ArcGIS Pro. So there you go. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you've learned a, a few things from it. You know, we're here to help if, if you need it. We provide a host of GIS services from enterprise implementation, system integration, application development, strategic planning. So if you need that help on developing a plan to migrate over to ArcGIS Pro, we can certainly help you out. If you need your staff trained in how to use ArcGIS Pro, we can certainly help you out. We've done that for many organizations throughout the, the U.S. here very recently uh, as people are making that transition over. So we, if you need that help, let us uh, know. We're, we'd certainly be happy to help you there. So you can reach us on our website, www.egisassociates.com, or give us a call at 678-710-9710, or e email us at info at egisassociates.com. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed the video, learned a lot from it. Uh, 
Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for further updates into the future. Uh, and other than that, y'all have a good day.